It's always good to see the growth spurt. Hmm. Not so good to see those things. But the growth spurt, that's a lovely growth spurt there. With all the tree diseases out there. Growth spurts are always welcome. This is Carl the Oaks Plantation. Carl the oak is right there. This here is my New Year's Day oak tree, the oak tree of hope. And it's got a beautiful growth spurt on it. It's got a lovely leader on it as well. It's looking really well. So that's Hope. So this is, Hope is in the same plantation as Carl. Carl is on the other side of Hope. This is that huge horse trust chestnut tree that I loved climbing as a child that one day exploded. The yews are all the way up there. I just came down from there, as you saw in the video, I passed them by, but there's still white clover blooming. Look at that, white clover blooming everywhere, even though the sheep are here. Hey pupper, how are you? Yeah, how are you? Ooh. This is from this angle, is this little plantation. And let's see, Carl, if I go down here, where's Carl? Oh, there's Carl. You see where the primrose is? Carl is right next to the primrose. So you can see Carl's there and Hope is there. So there is a great distance between them and they have Rowans and spindle and crab apples and gilda rose and oxide daisies and feverfew and these leftover bits of the huge horse chestnut surrounding them. So it's my little kind of wildlife paddock plantation, if you will. These are doing really well. I'm so pleased that. Uh, these are recovering well. The tree took, these must have taken root while that tree was dying and getting weaker and weaker. Just, I like, love looking at my plantations and seeing how they're doing. This copper beech is planted five or six years now. It was just a slip of a thing. Now it's really, really tall. I'm going to have to, there's a tiny gap underneath here, tiny. So I'm going to have to slide in under there sometime soon and chop the uh, stays. You see right there, they're not cutting into it yet, but uh, no, they're definitely not cutting on into it yet. 
next year I will chop their stays so this copper beech can be free to grow. This high fence like this is to keep the horses from reaching over and the horses can't get that high. And this deer fencing was a person I know who's a fencer. He had a leftover bits. And so my three copper beaches, one down beyond the plantation, this one and another one over there, all have this bit of deer fencing because it was a leftover from a big job. There you can see the sheep are munching. There is a sheep eating a thistle. <laughs> They say sheep don't eat thistles. And it's not like there isn't plenty of grass. This grass, there's thick amount of grass. See, oh, I was painting today. Look at that. My fingers are on the ground. So there's tons of grass. So if she didn't want to eat it, she wouldn't have to. There we go, she's eating a bit of grass as well. Here's another sheep eating thistles. Look at that. She's, oh, she's worried I'm gonna bother her. There, she's eating thistles. Look at that, both of those sheep are eating thistles. They have a mineral lick that they can access whenever they want, but they're eating thistles. I'd say there's something about thistles that are artificially fertilized, probably have a bitter taste, similar to dock. A lot of animals won't eat dock if they're from artificially fertilized areas. Look at that, mouthfuls of thistles. She's eating thistles. They're all eating thistles. I have a flock of thistle eating sheep. There must be something that the thistles are bringing up out of the soil that the sheep want. There. I always love this ridge with the sheep in silhouette across the top. Hey, yes, sweetie, how are you? How are you? Yes, you good girl. Here is the silver birch spindle plantation. And what's so cool is this year they're really beginning to show their silverness. Previous to that, when they're younger, the trunks are dark and almost black, but here they're going, they're beginning to go white and the spindle is looking great. You can see how the top part of that one's a bit black or dark and it's just coming through. But look at that, oh, I love silver birches. And here you have, there's yarrow here and oxide daisies over there. There's a bit of bramble. I'm gonna have to chop that back though. But it's so lovely having the silver birch beginning to silver. This is a cherry. Here, this is a young silver birch. Doesn't look like it's having the best of times. It looks like it's been a bit eaten, but you can see its trunk is not white yet. That's a young birch. 
Look at this magnificent spindle. This is huge. Gargantuan. I've got to go and take out some of the thistles from around these, um, this plantation. Because you can see here, it's getting very grown. Maybe this year I'll finally get my incredible yellow of the silver birch with the understory in the red pink of the spindle. This is a lovely dogwood I planted in memory of my really, really dear friend who died this year. Still upset about it. Hopefully that dogwood will keep going. But yes, this whole stretch, I'm hoping the upper story will be the, in autumn will be the yellow of silver birch and the understory will be pink, red. So it goes all the way around there. And when you're coming up the driveway, you come up and you see this curve of silver birch, yellow, and pink red spindle in the autumn, at least. That's my dream for this. Mind you, the silver birch are not doing as good over here, partially because these beech trees are slightly overshadowing them. But these silver birch are doing well. I planted this plantation in 2020. So it's four years old. Standing down here, you might get a better idea of the plantation. So this is the curve of the silver birch spindle plantation. So, so hopefully this year or even next year, with autumn permitting, we'll have the display, the autumnal display I'm looking forward to. But there's cherries dotted in as well. And the dogwood in the middle. Look at this magnificent display of Herb Roberts in amongst my harmonia. These bloom in January for pollinators who can't sleep. Anyway, Herb Roberts, this stuff is, um, finches love this stuff. So it's great when you have a big pile of it like that. That there, that's pheasant eye. The pollinators love it and the berries, the birds love the, the uh, berries. And then of course we have some of this stuff that pollinators love. Look, there's a bumblebee at it right now. <laughs> Very busy bumblebee. It's a bit late in the day for butterflies. Everybody's beginning to wind down for the evening. Must be getting on to, it's after eight sometime, I think. After eight in the evening. This is a oak tree plantation. Oak, spindle, rowan, gilda rose, cherries and horses, and a copper beach. How are you, pretty thing? Look at you, you're looking so round and fat. Oh, here comes the rain.
Okay, there we go. <laughs> I wonder if he'll stay up there as I walk up the driveway. Underneath this copper beach that's been protecting us from that rainfall. Now we're walking underneath a cherry tree. And this plantation here, here, so you can see the cat as well, you know. This plantation of Rowan, that's an evergreen oak. And this is a holly. He might not like the rain. It's really starting to fall on us now because we're out in the open. But this plantation over here, that was planted 15 years ago, I think. There's lots of, you can see here, Hold on a sec, let me turn this around. These rowans are really, ow, the cat. This rowan is really tall. So that's, give or take about 15 years ago, we planted, we planted the oak, the hollies, the rowans, the crab apple, this rowan. That red oak is a more recent one because there was another evergreen oak there and it blew over in a storm. So these rowans are, about 15 years old, I'd say. 15 or plus years old. This sweet chestnut is more recent. I planted that. And we're now under some ash trees. There's the cherries. And that's where we just walked up from. This beech tree here. And the dogs are all looking for shrews. The white tooth invasive shrew. And this is the bench that I'm always sitting on. I love sitting here. It's a bit wet, but it's still nice to sit here with all my dogs and a cat coming up the driveway. some ferns and hydrangeas and puppies in this sweet fluffy puppy and your sister who's a sweet puppy too such a smiler smiley face Whoop. 